Having disposed of God, Marx concluded that dialectical materialism was the only philosophy for understanding the world. He believed in materialism. Materialism says that what is seen in nature is all that exists. And because nature is made up of matter, that is all there is to the real world. Man is simply matter in motion and nothing more. There is no soul, no heaven or hell or afterlife. There are no angels, nothing but the physical world. Lenin agreed with Marx. Matter is the objective reality given to us in sensation. Lenin believed that matter is eternal, not created. He thought that not only our lives, but also our minds and even our consciousness evolved from this eternal matter. Marx and Lenin believed Darwin's theory of the survival of the fittest fit perfectly with the ideas of George Wilhelm Hegel, one of the most influential 19th century German philosophers. Hegel developed what is called the dialectic. The dialectic described the relationship between various things. For example, if there is an idea, a thesis, and an opposing idea, an antithesis, these would conflict and clash and eventually combine, resulting in a new idea, a synthesis, which is the best elements of the two. Hegel suggested that ideas come in conflicts. There's a thesis, a positive, and an antithesis, or an antithesis, a negative. And as, there, as these ideas come in conflict, always this combat between ideas that are opposites, there emerges a synthesis out of the two. Then this new synthesis becomes a new thesis, a positive, which by necessity brings about the emergence of its opposite, an antithesis or antithesis. And its conflict creates a new synthesis. And one has this process of thesis, antith antithesis, synthesis, thesis, antithesis, synthesis, thesis, antithesis, synthesis, until in Hegel's idea, the, the, the battle of ideas created an ultimate notion of an ideal of the perfect, uh, the good. Marx applied Hegel's theory to history and came up with the concept of class struggle. Ruling classes and oppressed classes conflict and combine over time, eventually leading to the perfect synthesis of the classless society. Marx also combined the idea of the dialectic with his materialism, creating a unique hybrid philosophy called dialectical materialism. Marx thought that his dialectical materialism gave him a clue to understanding history. He said if you go back in human history, you find that there were three major periods of time, each of which illustrated in some way or other what he called dialectical materialism. Those three periods of time were, first of all, slavery, which would be the ancient world, then feudalism, the medieval world, and then capitalism, which is the world of Marx's own time. Now, during each of these three periods of history, there was a struggle between two groups of people. That's the dialectic, see, struggle, conflict. Lenin also adapted these ideas, believing that Marx first turned the dialectic right side up and then made it his own. Dialectical materialism says that all of life is constantly evolving, but this evolution results from the clash of opposing forces. Engels. Nature is the proof of dialectics. All nature, from the smallest thing to the biggest, from a grain of sand to the sun, from the protozoa to man, is in a constant state of coming into being and going out of being, in a constant flux, in a ceaseless state of movement and change. But how do these changes come about? Marxists believe that nature acts dialectically, that change does not take place in a series of straight lines, but in a series of advances and retreats. It's like driving a nail. You don't raise a hammer, bring it crashing down, and keep pushing. When the blow has spent itself, you raise the hammer and hit the nail again. The withdrawal of the hammer is just as important as its downward thrust. By applying this principle to change in society, Marxist Leninists believe that retreat is just as important as advance. They move away from a goal in order to surge toward it later. The communist strategy is to build up extreme pressure and then withdraw, relieving the tension. And it is during this calm period, when others' defenses are down, that the communists are most likely to get what they want. 